It's Extreme Physics, and tonight our contestants are going for gold. They are Colin from Carrick Fergus, Deidre from Dungiven, and Bartik from Bally Money. And here's your host, Isaac Neutron. Hello, hello. We have a packed show for you tonight. It's all about being dense, so I feel right at home. And here's our walking, talking encyclopedia to tell us what's going on. It's Dr. Rula. Hi, Isaac. Today, we will be investigating the relationship between the mass and volume of liquids and regular solids. For this experiment, we will require a set of regular objects of the same material, but different sizes. A half meter rule, water, a measuring cylinder, and a top pan balance. First, we will look at the regular objects. We must measure the length, breadth, and height of each object using a half meter rule in centimeters and record the results in a table. We then calculate and record the volume in cubic centimeters using volume equals length times breadth times height. Next, we place each object onto a top pan balance to measure its mass in grams and record the result. Finally, we plot a graph of mass, the y-axis, against volume on the x-axis and draw a line of best fit. A straight line through the origin means that the mass of the material is directly proportional to its volume. The mass divided by the volume of an object is called its density. We can see that the gradient of the graph is the density of the material. For liquids, we follow the same process, although there's a slightly different way of measuring the mass of the liquid. First, we must measure and record the mass of the empty measuring cylinder. Next, we place 50 cubic centimeters of water into the cylinder and then find and record its mass. We then subtract the mass of the empty cylinder from the mass of the cylinder plus water, leaving us with the mass of the water itself. Read the volume of water from the measuring cylinder and record this too in cubic centimeters. We repeat the procedure, adding 50 cubic centimeters each time, up to 250 cubic centimeters. Again, when we plot a graph of mass against volume, we see that a straight line through the origin means that the mass of the water is directly proportional to its volume. Once again, the gradient of the graph is the density of the material, which in this case is water. From these experiments, we can see that for both regular solids and liquids, density equals mass divided by volume. Brula, what can I say? Exquisite as always. But now it's time to play Extreme Physics. Well, as you know, gold is the sixth most dense metal on Earth with a density of 19.3 grams per cubic centimetre. We've brought a big bar of it into the studio. Its volume is 960 cubic centimetres. Its mass is 7,555 grams. But is it real? Get the answer right and you get to take it home. So, Rula, real gold or fool's gold? Any tips? Well... We know that density equals mass divided by volume, so if the answer isn't 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter, it can't be gold. Three, two, one, go! Bartik from Balamani, gold or not? Its density is 7.87 grams per cubic centimeter, so no. Rula, is he right? If we divide 7,555 grams by 960 cubic centimeters, we get 7.87 grams per cubic centimeter, which, as you know, Isaac, is the density of iron. He is correct. It's not gold. So, Bartek, the iron's all yours. Well, it's been a blast. And it's goodbye from everyone here at Extreme Physics. But always remember, if it ain't fun... It's fun!